and then we move into Hill of Roses, which um, I think I like. I, I saw one of the really early vintages from someone showed me one, and they were you know they were quite light and ethereal kind of wines. Fascinating to see where that wine has gone, Jenny. We had a bit of a chat about it last night. Your thoughts? Um, I love this wine, but I've always loved this wine. Um, it's the fragrance. It, it and 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 it's so lively at five years old. So it pulses with life for me. I love mm. that. You just get it the minute you, that you smell it. But I have written here, and I have to read it out because I'm sure you get this all the time. Is it the power of suggestion? But are there dark rose notes amongst the violet and floral aromatics? I mean. Maybe the mind is playing tricks with this wine, but if it is, it's not a bad trick to play because I kept going back. I kept seeing roses and I thought, no, 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 no. That's too obvious. <laughs> um, <laughs> alluring aroma of turned earth, briar, black fruits, port wine, dark jelly, anise, baking spice, um, a balance of sweet Shiraz fruit intensity, a smidge of the savory, just, you know, adding a bit, bit of a different note there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lifted aromatic prettiness and delicacy to this wine. Um, oak, tannins, fully absorbed. A warm, embracing, but also substantial wine. I think that might be something that you can overlook. You just get so carried away with the emotion in this wine, but it is also a very substantial wine. Um, I loved it. Mm. Good. It's time to I'm sorry, Angus. For you, well, I mean, how did you how did you see the wine? How did it how did it play how, up for you? How, how can you follow Jenny? I mean, that's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it. And and ditto. <laughs> no, I absolutely I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. The the perfume, the the fruit driven berries, the orange peel, the fresh herb, the bouquet of, of, um, of thyme and bay and not sage like Mount Edelstone, but still that sort of fresh whiff of beautiful herbs. Um, the power and the richness, um, the fine line of acidity. I, I just loved it as well. It was wonderful. Mm. Mr. Simon? Spanish. Again, hard to follow hard to follow and add something really different but uh, it is really the intensity and opulence of fruit there which is just uh, amazing uh, i've always found uh, wines of, of you know hill of grace hill of roses uh, to offer that opulence and then intensity of fruit character but then on top of that what what is extra to the wine is of course that perfume that spice the integration of oak Again, just an amazing balance. And uh, I, I wonder at what stage do you start including that into um, the Hill of Grace to give you more uh, volume to sell? I mean, <laughs> I, I couldn't fault you if you did. <laughs> That's a question I asked too. <laughs> and Andrea? Yes, I mean, I loved it as well. It's really expressive. It was very uh, bright. There's a juiciness uh, to this wine, lovely mulberry notes along with the cedary as a slight savory edge but mostly about the beautiful pure fruit expression and for me this was drinking really really well right now which was a surprise so it seems to be the most open uh, of the ones we tasted yesterday um but i think it still has tremendous potential mm. for me it had and we don't need to you know allude to famous french regions or anything like that but it had a co roti prettiness to it this particular wine, I thought there was a there was a, like a ripe finish because there was sweet fruit there, but at the same time there was this just beautiful ethereal, spicy, meaty, floral, um, early, and that light that kind of lighter, slightly lighter palate than I think the the Hill of Grace has. It just that's where it sent me. I mean, I, I think the question is yes, obviously, you know, this wine will end up in well, potentially will end up in Hill of Grace. I, that wine was so beautiful as a little single vineyard piece. I think there's a, a strong argument for potentially keeping it as a separate, as a twin, as a separate entity. I know, I'm sure that's not in your plans, but I, I just think that wine was such a strong, unique, 
in gay, and you can hear what all our words, we're pretty much all saying the same thing. Um, it was such a unique, engaging wine. Um, uh, you know, we, we all loved it, clearly. <laughs> mm. Yes, I, I don't think um, Prue would have um, anticipated um, looking back when she started doing the selection of the grandfathers, her mass selection back in 86, that we'd be talking about the, the, the wine of that little nursery patch that she planted the same way as we are now. Mm. Um, it's really quite interesting because this was a project really to protect, preserve and protect the, the genetics of the old grandfathers um, and keep them. So the selection process was based on her training at Geisenheim. And it, it's, um, it's been a really valuable um, exercise for us. And to see those baby vines sort of growing up, getting older and older, and you know, from 2001 up to now, we've seen such a change in this level from you know the baby um, con pretty confectionery Shiraz to a serious Shiraz, um, and I love the comment that what, that you say you know could you consider putting out in Hill of Grace because when we line them up they're getting harder and harder now to say that Hill of Roses should stay out, but but the vines are only you know the vines are part of eighty nine so you know they're only. Um, just over 30 years old. So they're, they're still babies. Um, uh, they don't turn old vines until they're 35, according to the Brosset Chatter, Jenny, do they? So they've got a few more years to say Hill of Roses. But I must also say that I think this is probably one of the most floral Hill of Roses we've ever made. Um, and the comment about the roses is rather ironic because yeah. You know, that was the name <clears throat> of the family at, at the post office, the Rosenzweig family, Rose Tweet family. Um, and to think that one day the wine would actually... <laughs> have I roses tried to in. find it. I thought it, <laughs> but I thought, no, there are roses in that one. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, still yeah. got a red rose, I think, in the garden. I'm going to run out and get it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that, that rose musk, isn't it? It's mm. almost... Yes, part so of the a, Philip Grace kitchen spice. It's a very pretty version um, of the, you know, it's one of the prettiest versions I think we've made of the vineyard. So yeah, we're delighted. <clears throat> um, and it, it's interesting to talk about the Hill of Grace after this because, you know, you're, you're in the same vineyard and you've got the difference in vine age and how that plays out in, in the structure and texture of the wine. Mm. 